Alright, welcome back to another episode of Sakura Succubus 2, where, where we left off, Hazel was just about to ask us to join her in the shower. And, uh, over time I had to think of this decision, and, uh, probably in the last 25 minutes, but, um, yeah, let's do it. In the end, I'm powerless to resist Hazel's advances. She's way too attractive. Thank you. That's what I was about to say. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. After that briefing interlude, if it be called that, with Hazel, I showered myself down and get changed. Then I leave the Okawa Sports Center and then return home. When I finally get back, it's already the evening. I feel exhausted from copious amount of work and play. I'm so tired, I don't feel like kilking, though my stomach is growling. <sighs> Maybe I should go to the convenience store. But after being spoiled by Hafumi's excellent cooking, I'm really not in the mood for a prepackaged sandwich or rice balls. I'll try to psych myself up to leave my home before my hunger gets better of me. But before I leave, my attention is snagged by something sitting on a counter in my kitchen. It's an envelope which seems to be addressed to me. I wonder who left that there. I cross my room and retrieve the envelope. Then I turn it over in my hands. The envelope is addressed to me quite unmistakably. My hand, the, my name is written in a very neat character, obviously pinned by a steady hand. Seriously, these straight lines and neat curves look like they could have been displayed in a calligraphy museum. Who took the time to write my name so carefully? And who'd leave such an envelope in my apartment? I think we know. I open it up and then glance through the letter inside. It's short and simple, and it reads of thus. Greetings, Hiroki. I stopped by earlier with some simono pickles and homemade curry. I made it too much for my dinner. But it seems like you weren't in. I waited for a while, but you did not return. So I left, and I put the food in the fridge. <sighs> so, you may eat at your la at your leisure. I hope you like it. From yours ever, dutifully wife, Hufumi. I knew it. I knew it. And if you're wondering how I knew your address, knew where your address is, don't worry. I'm not stalking you. Marina told you. So Marina's telling my fucking bitch. Good lord! As for how I got inside while, when you were away, that is a well-kept secret amongst a succubi. Ah, I guess that explains the letter. I did think my apartment was looking a little fresher than usual. All the dirty dishes in the sink have been cleaned and they're now soaked on the side. My clothes too are neatly folded in the drawers and my floor looks like it's been swept. Did Hifumi did all the household chores while she was waiting for me to, do, to come back? I wonder if she's serious about being my wife. She didn't need to do all of this for my sake. As an adult, I can take care of my own chores. I try to keep on top of things too, but sometimes I get so busy. I should do something to thank Hifumi the next time I see her. Maybe I should buy her some chocolates, but I doubt she'll she'd accept them. She's so humble. Ah, jeez. Now I'm starting to feel guilty for hanging back at the Alcara Sports Center with Hazel. If I'd gone back earlier, maybe I would have caught Fumi. Then I could have thanked her to her face. I guess it's too late for that now, though. True to Fumi's letter, this is a large bowl of curry in my fridge and a side of and a side dish of sumono pickles, excuse me. I warm up the curry then eat it. It tastes absolutely delicious as usual. And Fumi's cooking, even when reheated, beats standard convenience store fare by a country mile. She's too good for me. Now well fed and with all my chores taken care of, I retreat to my bedroom. 
there I get changed. Then I collapse to my freshly aired and beaten, thank you, Hafumi, futon. It's relatively early, not even 22 o'clock p.m., and, but sleep soon descends upon me. I feel exhausted. As I drift into the land of slumber, I consciously find myself dwelling onto one particular memory. In this memory, I'm 18 years old again. I'm traversing the countryside. The sunlight beats down on the nape of my neck. A warm wind blows tug at my hair and the hem of my shirt. The yellow repast blossoms in bloom and their scent hangs heavily in the air. I'm not alone either. A girl walks along beside me. Her dark hair falls free and loose around her shoulders. She's clad in nothing more than a white summer dress. Since it's such a hot day, I tell her to go paddling in a nearby stream to relieve herself. Oh, it's, oh yeah, I remember, it's it's this. I, I, yeah, I remember this. It, we're basically having the same, uh, we're having the same flashback to uh, his girlfriend. She takes my advice and removes her sad sandals, excuse me, and she steps into the water. She steps in, I step in after her, and a childish game assures I splash her laughing a while while she frowns. Irrit, she stands on the bank of the river and rings out her dress. It's soaping wet at this point. The white fabric turns translucent and I can see right through it. This memory is over a decade old at this point. I haven't seen that girl in a long, long time. She was my very first girlfriend and I loved her a lot, though I never parted from her, but now, Yuki. I sigh her name softly in my sleep. My arms wind, wind, excuse me. Wait, is it wind or wind? Yeah, it's wind around my pillow and I nuzzle my head against it. I'm half aware I'm lying in my flat all alone, but when I inhale, I swear I smell a, the represent, rape seeds blossoms. I can hear the cessatus too and feel the touch of the warm wind. I thought I'd moved on from my past. Yuki was nothing more than a footnote of my history in the history of my life. Sorry. Why am I thinking about her now? I doubt you'll ever I'll ever see her again. But still, I can't extricate myself from my memories. Why would she what would she do if she could see me now? What would she say? I can't help but wonder. Meanwhile, in the succubus realm, Sweet mother of God. <laughs> this is getting so far. Oh, man. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, I'm gonna need water after this. Nah, bro. Hmm. This is quite a turn of events. The last time I met him, he was nothing but an awkward boy. How things have changed. Wait a minute. Think such a man could capture the hearts of so many succubi, and in such a short period of time, he's even managed to ensure the heart of the previous queen. This is quite the feat. I don't care much for the human realm, but this is, goes, on. this goings on, are enough to intrigue me even more. Now I wonder, should I show myself to Roki in flesh? It would be unbecoming of me to continue watching something sort. of a voyeur. He has taken very, very good care of my subjects. It would be remiss of me, as their princess, to not offer him some words of thanks. It has been a long time since I saw him last, thought I, though I wonder if he thinks of me still. Would he ever remember who I am? I wonder what will happen next. I knew she was a fucking succubus, and that's it. That is it. And I knew she was a succubus. Because why the hell is all of a sudden she... He's having these goddamn reminiscence about her. Like, 
It makes sense. But that's it for Sakura Succubus, guys. Mother of God. What a journey, man. What a journey. <sighs> Hope you guys enjoyed this finale of Sakura Succubus. If you have, make sure to leave a like. Also, hit that subscribe button if you are new to the channel. If you want to see more of Sakura Succubus, I will actually more handily get Sakura Succubus 3 if I can. And I'll sure hope it will be out. Um, but anyways, hope you guys enjoy the video. Uh, make sure to tell me in the comments if you guys want to actually see that. You want to see Sakura Succubus 3? Just let me know. Uh, but anyways, it's been it, guys. Later.